everyone, it's Dr. Carmen Quarter here with Health Ed Solutions, and today's lesson is on the respiratory assessment. Don't forget to visit us online at healthedsolutions.com for more free content. Now let's get started. How different is the respiratory assessment for critically ill patients versus those that are not so critically ill? We're going to talk about all four assessment techniques, which are inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. We'll just start off by talking about inspection. You can gather so much data about your patient the minute that you walk into your patient's room. You can tell if they're sitting up in the chair, sitting there with their clicker watching TV, they don't have any oxygen on, they're not struggling to breathe. This patient can be very quickly labeled as not sick. On the other hand, you are looking at several different things in a patient that is critically ill or that we know has some sort of respiratory issue going on. So the first thing I've got mentioned here with inspection is the oxygen. Always, always, always look at the type and amount of oxygen that your patient is on. The more oxygen they're on, the sicker they are. So they can be on room air, all the way up to a critically ill patient who is on a ventilator. So the type and amount is very, very important. Obviously you're counting respiratory rate and the quality of respirations. Are they good, solid, full respirations or are they really shallow and are they breathing too fast? Are they breathing too slow? Accessory muscles. Is your patient really having to use those accessory muscles and those intercostal muscles to help them breathe or are they not struggling to breathe at all? AP to lateral diameter. AP is anterior to posterior and lateral is from here to here. Normally your AP to lateral diameter is one to two, but in a certain type of patient, your AP to lateral diameter or your chest diameter, some people will call it, is one to one. And those are emphysema patients or our patients with what we call barrel chests. Color. Do they have a good color or are their nail beds kind of bluish? Those are signs of respiratory distress of hypoxemia. Positioning. Do they have to sit upright at all times to get a good full breath? Are they just laying back in the bed and they're breathing okay? Are they in a tripod position, struggling to breathe? That's a sign of a COPD exacerbation where they're bent over on the table and they're having to breathe that way. So positioning is huge. Just talking to your patient. Are they able to carry on a conversation without getting short of breath? That's a good indicator that they're doing okay. And sometimes you may be able to hear audible noises like wheezes just by walking into your patient's room. That is a huge red flag when we hear adventitious or abnormal breath sounds just by walking into the room. So that kind of sums up inspection. Now we're going to move on to palpation, which is really important in our critically ill patients. So the first one I want to talk about is chest excursion. This is the assessment technique where you, as the nurse, are going to place your hands on your patient's back with your thumbs touching, and you're going to ask your patient to inhale deeply, and you're looking for your hands to expand symmetrically. If they don't expand symmetrically, then there's either air or fluid or something trapped in one of the lungs or one of the pleural spaces that is causing an asymmetrical expansion of your hands when your patient breathes in. So it could be a pleural effusion. It could be a pneumothorax, something that's causing asymmetric chest excursion. Crepitus. Crepitus is also called subcutaneous emphysema. This is especially important with our patients who have chest tubes. Chest tubes are inserted for a number of reasons, but for our respiratory patients, they usually are inserted to drain off air from pneumos or drain off fluid from pleural effusions. And that crepitus or that subcutaneous emphysema is that Rice Krispie feeling around the chest tube insertion site 
And what it is, is it's leakage of air up into the subcutaneous tissue. So every patient with a chest tube initially is gonna have a little crepitus around that insertion site just from the trauma of having a chest tube inserted. But you as the nurse, you're gonna mark that crepitus and if that crepitus or subcutaneous emphysema starts to expand beyond your markings, that is something that needs to be reported to the provider. I've actually seen patients before that have had subcutaneous emphysema expand all the way up from a chest tube site up to their neck into their face and it caused them a lot of problems needless to say so that is crepitus or subcutaneous emphysema tactile fremitus there's a couple different ways that you can assess tactile fremitus but what it is is it is a vibratory sensation or it's the feeling of vibrations when you ask your patient to speak. So you can actually use the palms of your fingers and place them on your patient's back and you're gonna work from top to bottom and you're gonna have your patient say something like 99. So you'll have them say 99. Move it down, 99. And you'll repeat that from the back and then do the same thing on the front. And things that affect that vibratory sensation there's going to be increased vibrations in disease processes like pneumonia, where there is consolidation of fluid that increases the vibration. Also pleural effusion, that's fluid. So fluid buildup is going to increase tactile fremitus or increase the vibration that you feel when you assess this technique. Things that are going to decrease the vibration are air. So pneumothorax or anything like that where there's air that has entered the pleural space that is going to decrease vibration because air is not a good transmitter of vibration so that is tactile fremitus so next percussion this is probably the least used assessment technique so percussion basically is performed on the patient's back kind of in between the scapula and vertebral column on both sides of the patient's spine. So you're just tapping, all right? You're starting from the top and working your way down the patient's back and you're tapping. You can also do it on the front. I like to use my left hand to be the hand that's in contact with the patient and I use my right hand to strike my left hand when I am assessing percussion. But what I have here is the findings that you would assess from the percussion technique. Resonance is a totally normal finding. You're just going to hear a nice resonant sound when you tap your finger on a nice, normal, healthy lung, all the way over to hyper resonance, which is a sign that there is way too much air. So a sign of a pneumo, air escaping the pleural space. Timpani is also another sound you might hear. Timpani is actually normal over the belly because the belly is full of air, but a very tympanic sound over the lungs indicates that there's way too much air. So resonance, normal, hyperresonance, and timpani are signs of air. If you hear a sound of dullness or flatness that's an indicator that there is fluid because fluid is not a good producer of sound when you percuss finally last but definitely not least auscultation so auscultation you know to assess all of the areas there's about eight on the front eight on the back that you're going to auscultate do not forget the lateral lobes so the right lateral lobe, there's three places to auscultate. The left lateral lobe, there are two places to auscultate. And so you're going to start auscultating way up here above the clavicle and then work your way down. With auscultation, it is very, very important that you make sure you listen side to side because you're comparing one side to the other. So you would listen here, then listen here move it down to here then listen here and all the way down until you have auscultated all eight places on the front and all eight places on the back and also your lateral lobes so what are we listening for 
Our normal breast sounds are bronchial, bronchovesicular, and vesicular. So bronchial breast sounds are heard up here around the tracheal area and around the second or third intercostal space. They are very loud, very hollow, tubular, very loud pitched sounds. Then your bronchovesicular sounds are heard just over the lung tissue. Those are what you're going to assess with normal breast sounds. Medium pitched sound. They're not too loud. They're not too soft. They're just right. So those are your bronchovesicular and then your vesicular breast sounds are going to be heard out in the lung periphery down here way down in the bottom out in the periphery of the lung tissue and those are very very soft pitched sounds now abnormally we can hear crackles especially in our critically ill patients crackles are soft rustling sounds almost like rice krispies they do not clear with coughing y'all Crackles are an indicator that there's something going on all the way down into the alveoli, in the lower airways. They are not something that you can clear with coughing. So they could indicate atelectasis. You might hear crackles in someone with pneumonia because pneumonia is an infection of the lower airways. Wheezes are an indicator that there's airway narrowing or bronchoconstriction. Most often we associate wheezing with an asthma attack. Ronchi. Now ronchi, we've all had ronchi before. If you've ever had bronchitis and you've had a cough, <laughs> that's ronchi, all right? So ronchi is that nasty mucus stuff that does clear with a cough. Everybody that gets bronchitis is gonna have ronchi. Strider is something you never ever want to hear on your patient. Strider is that loud crowing sound. It is a warning sign of imminent airway closure. One of the only times I've heard Strider very, very loudly is in a patient that we extubated or we took them off the ventilator because she was doing so well. She was awake writing me notes and things. When we extubated her within 30 minutes or so, she was calling me saying she had, she was having trouble breathing. I eventually started hearing Strider coming from her and uh, that was an indicator that we needed to reintubate her and we needed to reintubate her now. So Strider is something that you never ever want to hear on your patient. You can hear Strider sometimes in kids that get croup, that croupy cough, that <laughs> that that is Strider. Not nearly as severe as the Strider that I was referring to, but it's still an indicator that you probably want to take that child and get them some steroids, some anti-inflammatories to help open up those airways. Finally, a rub for a pleural friction rub. That is an indicator of an inflammatory process. Usually there's an infection. It's like a grating of the pleural surfaces against each other. They're rubbing against each other. Pleural friction rub is an indicator of probably pleurisy because those lung surfaces are grating against each other and creating a rub, a grating sound. That's it for our lesson today. Thanks for watching and remember to check out our website at healthedsolutions.com for more free content or to get certified or recertified online.